uh, it's a delight for me to talk about uh, Bruce Lee's influence on television advertising. So obviously that's a subject that uh, I have quite a, a bit of uh, experience in teaching, and so it, it's fantastic. It's also lovely to be back in Cardiff as well. I was born in Lady Road, which is just a stone's throw away from here, in a house, which I won't tell you the numbers, saving the, uh, the tourist uh, trail. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, as a Welsh-born um, Chinese growing up in the 1970s and 80s, you would be lucky if you saw a Chinese person being featured on British television, let alone British uh, television advertising. Um, so that's had a bit of a, an impact on me in terms of my sort of growing up here. And um, I've been specialising in teaching in advertising the last uh, 15 years. Um, the interest in advertising came really out of my own experience in terms of me sort of not noticing a lot of oriental faces, oriental Chinese faces on British adverts. And then when I reached my 30s or thereabouts, I spotted some adverts which had a profound influence on me and led me down the road to become a, an ad marketing communications uh, specialist. So, um, what is advertising? Well, Advertising is a mediated communication, so it's uh, communication that goes through various different forms of media, and there's me massive media proliferation right now. So we're not just talking about TV, we're talking about online, we're talking about print, all sorts. Um, and it's targeted to an audience, it's about an audience, and their ability to decode and take on board the messages that the ad makers are trying to communicate about a brand to you. So if you're in the business of advertising, you have to be good at communicating that message out to your target audience. To be able to do that well, because we're in advertising, you know what's coming next, don't you? I've already mentioned Don Draper. So Don Draper is a fictitious character from um, a, a TV show, Mad Men. Hopefully you've heard of Mad Men. In season one, episode one, this fictitious ad guy in Manhattan, New York, Defined advertising, and I believe that's a better definition of what advertising is. It's based on one thing, happiness. And you know what happiness is? Happiness is the smell of the, a new car. It's freedom from fear. It's billboard at the side of the room that screams of reassurance that whatever you're doing is okay. You are okay. So it's giving target audiences who are buying a car that the, the car that they bought is okay. It fits with who you are. And we're communicating that to you to remind you in advertising, in adverts as well, that what you purchase is the right thing for you. So advertising isn't selling something that we don't um, have the ability to buy or we don't have the purse strings to pay for. It is about communicating something to us about the brands and it's about our sort of relationship with the brands that we have. That's what we teach our students. That's the right way to do advertising. Unfortunately, the profession is tarnished with a lot of um, these sort of uh, perceptions, misconceptions about what advertising is. I wanted to start with that because I think that's quite important to set the context for um, today's um, session. So, to make ads that speak to the target audience, they've got to be relevant. We've got to take into context the target audience, who they are, where they sit, what they've done, what martial arts they've done, how do they see Bruce Lee? When do they see Bruce Lee? Um, you know, do, if they go training, how did they get into it? All those sorts of nuances become very important, and it's the sociological aspects that we need to, to get into. In terms of the underpinning uh, for, for my work, this is part of a broader study that I'm doing as part of my PhD on martial arts imagery on television advertising. I've adapted it slightly to fit around the Bruce Lee theme. It's to basically acknowledge the fact that advertisers also have a responsible role. They have to be uh, sure that the ads that they do reflect certain behaviours, attitudes and values that should be true of what's actually going on out there. If it isn't true, then it's misrepresentation going on. So there's an, a very strong ethical need for advertisers to ensure that they devise a message that has a social consciousness behind it as well. We, in marketing, also are responsible for encouraging our students to think about the way to get the message across is to think about breaking down the target audience to certain different groups. It's called segmentation and it's totally legitimate to the outsider looking in. You might think, actually, that's a bit of stereotyping going on. Okay, so 
they have a sort of profession. So in advertisers, when they're making an ad, they're having some sort of idea that there's a certain type of person that I'm talking to, or when we're de selecting people that we're depicting, and the ethnicity and all those sorts of things, maybe they haven't really thought too much or thought more carefully about them. So that's where I'm coming from. There's also social learning and uh, imitation and role modeling going on as well. So with um, Bailey, for example, uh, and he's done quite a bit of research that looks at um, uh, how African Americans uh, interpret the ads that they see that they're exposed to that features other African Americans. Um, it is basically saying that if you're an African American and you see an African American on television ads, then you might think, oh, that is telling me that what that person's featured doing in the ad is right then. I'm going to imitate that behavior. Or you're going to see somebody doing maybe wonderful sports related stuff uh, on a TV ad, and you might think, oh, that's a really good role model. I'm going to, I'm going to follow that route as well for, my, for myself. There's also the cultivation aspect as well, and, and the culturalists will, will be very familiar with this. And this is looking at the, the fact that what you see out there as members of the tagged audience can also be influenced by your identity, could also be influenced by what you see. So, as I said, I was growing up in the 1970s and 80s in Cardiff, in South Wales, and there were not many ads out there, but one or two ads I did see did leave quite a big impression on me in terms of my identity. Um, and also audience limitations. Our ability to interpret and decode those, those ads also become quite important uh, as well. So, uh, visual representation and uses and gratifications are also key areas that we need to take into account because for ad advertisers, when they're devising messages, you need to be aware that target audiences, not just buying the brands, but they're getting other gratifications like entertainment that they can get from enjoyment of the ads that we do. And also visual representations, basically looking at um, the sort of um, pictures, the ethnicity of the models that you use can also uh, have an impact on your target audiences as well. So today we're talking all about Bruce Lee. Ta da here we go. This is my uh, Guardian Royal Exchange. I went into the History of Advertising Trust archives to uh, ask them, have we got any ads that features Bruce Lee? Because I'm doing a, a talk about Bruce Lee. And, uh, in adverts, have we got anything? So this is one of the early ones from the 1980s, a printout by Colin Dickinson Pierce, and it's very simply done with the headline about self defense, and you've got fantastic photography, linking it to Garden Royal Exchange Insurance um, Company thing. Authenticity is what we're talking about when we're talking about Bruce Lee. He is an ethnic Chinese guy, um, who I believe he was born in um, San Francisco, correct, if I'm not wrong. Then he went over to Hong Kong for his upbringing, went back to San Francisco, or back to America, back to Hong Kong, and so on and so forth. So he is a Hong Kong Chinese, um, and he can also define himself as an American Chinese as well. Um, he's unique in that his martial arts, you know, we've spent two days uh, talking about him, so it's about entertainment, so it's about, for me, it's his identity and its impact on other people like me. So as people like me, what do I get from, from him? Apart from the fact that he is a cool guy doing martial arts, everybody who loves martial arts loves Bruce Lee. So what does it say? I went and trolled through some of the um, ads uh, for you. There are, unfortunately, because it's advertising, there will be some showing of the ads. Now, I talked about me growing up in the uh, 1970s sort of and uh, 80s. You had to wait, I had to wait to the 1990s for Levi 501 to be shown on TV, the advert to be shown on TV featuring Kofu. This advert had an influence on me. Let's have a look at it. It's going to work. Oops, I not
Christians love that. Um, so that, oops, I have some nice slides now. Yeah, I don't want the next one to start. Okay, hopefully the next one's not going to start. Right, okay, so that one. Interesting. It's got the Chinese laundry. All right, so it's got the Chinese laundry. It's got the villains. It's got your possible Fu Manchu sort of character. You've got your speed. You've got the Bruce Lee jumping up mid midair, just like he would do in his um, actual movies. Also, interestingly, directed by it's it's called the Agency Battle, Wilmerhead Hegarty, British uh, London Agency, well known for creative work, and um, the director for that is Jonathan Glazer, who's a very well known mm -hmm. filmmaker as well. Uh, Jonathan went on to uh, much greater things as well as a, as a result of his initial work um, uh, for Levi Strauss. And um, so, so that's, if you like, that is a beacon of great work. So what, what about it? Well, I think it's, it's fantastic that we see quite interesting out. The next one, a year later, because I was really scanning TV channels looking for inspiration. I've got this one here as well. That might be of interest. <laughs> Strawberry flavor. You and Bruce are going to cast a dead mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so you make it so creepy. Mm -hmm. So, that one, I definitely remember seeing on TV and I thought, what the is going on there? And also, yeah. <laughs> People would really like that one. Yeah, and just sort of, um, so check it out on YouTube. People are asking to get original yeah, copies yeah. of that. So, interestingly, active, we are the active audience. We're all here. We're active audiences. We're decoding the ads. We're all ad literate because ad literacy, ad literacy has gone up in the in years, <coughs> many years. So it doesn't surprise us that um, you know these sort of ads are uh, easy to decode. I don't need to explain them because you, you can still decipher and, and pick out certain nuances. From there and they are Bruce Lee ad. We've got a latest one which I, I would like to to show you which was just released about two months ago. It's going to work. It come back to that later. I don't want to. Uh, no, it's a bit, uh, a bit finicky. Okay so these are just some examples of ads. The British advertising uh, profession are renowned for making some of the, the greatest ads. I mean, think John Grace's work is one of the beacons of, of uh, great work here. I've made this quite global because we're wanting to look at, to see, because we're selecting Bruce Lee ads specifically, so I had to, I was limited in terms of what, what, I, could, what I could find. Um, and these are just some of the examples of, of others, and we will uh, go through some of these uh, in a few minutes. Now, be like water is, is obviously a quote that you will be all familiar with. Okay, I don't need to go, go through them. Um, but it's very interesting when I was doing research for this, he actually says, Be water, my friend. But it's funny how over the years we've sort of added be like, we've added the like in there. And uh, this is a minor sort of accuracy issue uh, coming, coming um, through here. Um, so it's quite interesting for us to see. What, what else is used? His iconic speech has also been used in, in advertising as well. So I've got um, an example of a one here. Empty your mind. Be friends. Shapeless. Okay, so that's 
to the, the uh, sonic loop. <laughs> Apologies. Okay. I need to I need to film a specialist to help me uh, upload my videos. So uh, yeah, interestingly, that quote is used quite a bit in advertising. Look at this from Body Armor this year. I said empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. So you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. Water can flow. Water can flow. Be water, my friend. illustration of this iconic quote being used in advertising some slight visual changes but really sub, uh, you know really good at sort of supporting brand some of you may sort of think one is maybe better than the other and then we have some sort of debate about um, effectiveness an ad is only effective if it can be spread virally uh, i'm not sure if you've come across this one the nokia n96 limited edition promotion where uh, it's well known for um, uh, this sort of uh, fake, fake uh, Bruce Lee ad that, that's um, been uh, uh, generated uh, out there. And uh, I'll just show you very, very quickly, I'll chew all of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> not physically, you can't go finally for uh, the Nokia. And it is now that with actors, they put it into the um, Bruce Lee. Um, and if you use that, got lots and lots of people because it was real and it wasn't. Um, so I think you get the idea, and there's two, two or three various uh, versions of that. So the content generated from that really helped the brand uh, Nokia to get itself in, into the, uh, the public consciousness and got people really, really interested in the brand. And it sort of helped to sort of um, support the fact that Lucy is a mythical character. And um, you know, obviously we've got this authenticity issue at stake here. Because if you use a, a character, I think it's all about uh, whether it's um, uh, going to be authentic or not. So, so that's something that I, I will be looking into. Um, uh, right, so I've only got two minutes, so I'll just see uh, what else we can, we can show you. This one was mentioned earlier, but it's basically about the game changer uh, advert for Johnny Walker's. Has people actually seen that one? Mm -hmm. You have my one, so I don't need to show it. Oh, you I'll just quickly <laughs> show it. It's not CGI and it does relate to our previous uh, speaker. Shay,就像是水 这是我带给一切的命运，这是我被你们用来记得的原因。执着是属于告诉你的，那它是超越成功的命。你是否要勇气，追寻内心的勇敢？你是否要勇气，接受你自己的努力，让心如水洗涤？也许有一天。你不需要用成功来定义，因为你已是变革者。K.O.K.，聪明后加蓝牌。Or is he? Is he alive? That's what we're thinking when we see that. That's a quite controversial one. Yeah, I like it. Um, you know, I think it's important. 
probably get on my because it's it's important as well, other than yeah. Cantonese. And exactly. Also, he's sort of abstained from alcohol, and he's good with tea and uh, alcoholic beverage. Sharon Lee's daughter said it was an interesting experiment when they went down this road, um, and it was quite important for them not to show Bruce Lee actually consuming alcohol in that advert. So we had a bit of a. Just um, like <coughs> yeah. That's right, yeah, just off on. <laughs> so, okay, so just to end with this, the. Bruce Lee, although he's not around anymore, this CGI to help us to bring him back to life. But also advertisers love using him as a theme and it is quite a powerful in terms of what, what he can actually bring to the profession. Um, so there's um, this ad guy, Wayne Deakin, for example, says that it's, it's quite important because he tells us all about breaking down all the various skills and the hard work, trimmed off any of the unnecessaries and putting everything down to sim simplistic form. And advertising is all about simplifying things into a very simple message that your target audience will get very, very quickly. Um, so, you know, we felt that was uh, quite a, a powerful thing. And every, every so often you will see the same agency maybe regurgitating, reusing uh, Bruce Lee uh, as a theme in, in their adverts. So, thank you for listening.